Good morning and welcome to another edition of Don Often on Fishing. You know, today you may not even see a hook set. You may not see a fish in the boat. But what I'm going to do, I've received about 50 emails in the last couple of weeks. I've been gone, I went to Alaska and been gone uh, for a little while. And, uh, but now that I'm back, uh, these emails have been asking me specifically uh, how I transition from summer to fall when the kokanee season's over and the lake trout seem to be moving towards their spawning beds. How do I make that transition? So all I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you various methods of doing this. So the first ones we're going to talk about are just simply taking a brown or green tube or a white tube. This happens to be a little bit of a clear um, rather than white and it's also got a little tiny bit of, uh, of glow on it. So I'm just going to start with this. I'm going to tip them with a little tiny bit of night crawler and I'm going to work a shoreline. Now this particular shoreline is, is, is in Lucerne Bay and just almost to the gorge. If you look over there you can see the gorge. No secret where I am. I'm just simply trying to find fish in the shallows that are either chasing kokanee for, to, to eat their eggs, um, that are just looking for crawdads to bulk up before winter, and I'm looking for rainbows for cutthroats, I'm looking for the occasional smallmouth bass, and I'm also looking for pup lake trout. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode, and I'm going to show you how I fish these during the transition. Now I fish these baits a lot all through the year so if you look at my videos not much changes during the year with the exception of the addition of a, maybe a night crawler and also uh, how I, I uh, work this. I don't gen generally jig on the bottom with these. I'm casting and retrieving so hope you enjoy today's episode. Thanks for watching. Okay as I start this episode I'm going to start with brown and uh, I'm right now in 101 feet of water I see some fish on the screen, but that's inconsequential. I see just a few down there, maybe at 80, 85 feet, um, but they don't look like they're big fish. They just look like they're, they're moving through. Um, so I'm going to be moving towards the shoreline, and uh, that's the size of night crawler that I have on the hook. I don't put too much uh, stock in that. I just, I just put a little small piece of night crawler. And, uh, and then I'm going to try to get into where I'm maybe in, the boat might be in 40, 50 feet of water, and I might be throwing to anywhere from 10 um, to 30 feet of water. As usual, I've got Berkeley Nanofill line on my Gary Dobbins rod, a Colt Series uh, CL703SF, which means spinning. And, uh, and I've got an a eight-pound test uh, Sunline fluorocarbon leader, and then my tube, which is with a quarter ounce uh, ball head weight. I, I really prefer Gamagatsu as the uh, ball head that I buy. I do buy them made. I don't pour my own, and uh, and that's the rigging. Using obviously, I've got a Quantum um, Accurist reel, and. Uh, and that's, that's everything I do right now for this kind of fishing on the banks for the transition from summer to fall. As I'm working my bait, oh, there's a hit right there as I was going to explain what's going on. Looks like a rainbow, but, uh, but basically what I'm, what I'm trying to do, yeah, that's a nice little rainbow, came off, that's fine, I'm not keeping them anyway. Okay, so, all I was trying to, to let you know there is, is I cast towards the shore, let it sink down just a little bit, and then I start to reel. And I, and I do it kind of in a yo-yo fashion. Um, and so I'll cast it out. Uh, sometimes I, I realize how shallow the shoreline is, and if I want to get maybe into 10 feet of water, I won't throw it all the way to the bank. But then all I'm going to do is I watch that line, I watch that... that uh, uh, what happens down there uh, as it's as it's drifting down? I I don't feel I'm not feeling the bottom, uh, and all I'm doing is every you know five or six seconds I'll go ahead and lift my rod tip, which makes it makes the the bait jump a little bit and makes it uh, 
makes it kind of yo-yo back to me, just kind of in a, like a roller coaster, just up and down, up and down. And uh, I expect the fish to chase. And, uh, and that's what I do. Okay, so I just took about 20 casts with the green, um, the brownish green, uh, and had the one bite, or actually the one fish, rather. And, um, and uh, really just one more uh, small bite that I didn't get, uh, didn't, wasn't shooting at the time. And now I've switched. Well, I'm just about to switch, and I'll show you the switch, to, um, to, my, uh, to my white one. Now we've got another uh, different kind of a look, but the same exact thing. So 20 casts or so, maybe 21, 22 casts with the, with the brown and green. And now I'm switching to, uh, to the clear white. And we'll, we're treating it exactly the same way. Um, I'm in uh, 42 feet of water with the boat, so you see that this comes off really, really steep from the shoreline. That can sometimes be great, and sometimes it can be not so great, depending on what the fish are doing. So we're continuing to move. We've probably moved uh, maybe 200 yards uh, since we started up the bank uh, towards the mouth of the gorge. So very, very simple procedure. And and all. I'm, I'm not trying to get a little bit excited about it or, or saying anything about it. It's just that we're trying to see what kind of fish are here as they transition from summer to fall. Because I can guarantee you at some point between now and the 1st of October all the way through to the 1st of December, there will be times that you can pull in here and have uh, three different species of fish just loaded uh, in this area that you can cast and retrieve to. So once again, that's the, that's the, uh, the way I look at it. And those are the two most popular colors and uh, with a little bit of variation on the glow. And, uh, and that's, how I'm, that's how I'm doing it. Now I'm not gonna stay too, too long in one spot because quite frankly, this is a little slow, but I'm just trying to learn what's there. I'm watching my finder seeing if there are fish on the upper side, upper end of the column. I'm varying my retrieve. If I feel like I need to, I can reel faster, keeping the, the, the bait up in the column. And if the fish are up in the column, like I'm seeing a few on the finder that show that they might be in less than 10 feet, then I'll reel a little faster so that my, so that my tube comes up basically to that area. But other than that, I'm not watching the, I'm not watching the finder for that shoreline. I trust that those fish are there if they're, uh, you know, if they physically are there, that they'll chase me down and bite me. So that's what I do. And just as fast at all, it just came off. But I had a beautiful fish on right there just as I turned off the camera and said, here, that's what I do. All of a sudden, I had a fish on, but I really couldn't set the hook because I was fooling with the camera. So. That was actually a really fine bite, bigger fish than the, than the last one, but I do believe it was still a rainbow. So I'm gonna go actually right back out there and see if there's a chance that I can pick up that, that fish that hit so hard. And uh, sometimes they'll come back, others, sometimes they won't. Not a, not a little bit of a crystal ball there on figuring out whether a fish is going to come back and, and hit a second time after you've actually set the hook on him or tried to set the hook on him. Oh, missed him. Had a good fish trying for me. Oh, he just keeps missing it. It's kind of fun to watch him. There we go. Now we got him. Look at that nice fish. <laughs> Just on the retrieve, I picked up two fish that were that that were that were coming. This is a nice cutthroat. Yeah, beautiful cut. Okay, and and once again, this is just being observant, not trying to to break any world records or anything else about catching all the, catching these fish. All I'm trying to do is is show you that when you're casting retrieve in super clear water, you can have these fish come and and grab you, and that's great. So, Beautiful cut. My goodness, they're getting to be nice fish here. Really nice to see. Okay, so I've, I've made maybe 16 casts. 
with the clear, I've landed a fish and had uh, two or three more bites. And, uh, and then on that last cast, the reason I cast back behind the boat is there were several fish, at least two other fish with the one that I just uh, caught and released, that uh, cutthroat. So always give them a second chance. And once again, most of these, these fish, uh, uh, they were actually starting to chase when I retrieved it. So these fish were actually, uh, looked like they were hunting for something, which is great to see. So I just go back to the same, the same thing. Now at this point, uh, for the day, and certainly for this area, um, I think white has done, or that clear white, has done a little tiny bit better than the, uh, than the brown. So the next stop that we make, or that I make today, I'm going to probably start with that clear white, and then, and then use the uh, green brown as a backup if conditions change and and they decide they, they they want a different color well we just made a move quick move across the channel and there's the first fish first cast so we've got some more rainbows here it's a nice little fish as I told you I'm starting with the white again and boy, he wanted it. That fish would have eaten without the night crawler. So that's a good indication of, of what it is. And that's why you move spots. That's why you don't rely on one spot just because you saw somebody else catch them there. Or you watched one of my videos and saw me catching them there. You just do not worry about that. You just go... Find your own water and and uh, and uh, don't be afraid to try something new. I've never fished this spot in my life, so I just decided that I'd just cross the channel and uh, and fish this edge and had that fish on the first bite or on the first first cast. So, so ask yourself, what's similar? Why did I choose just to come across the channel? It's where I was fishing. Before now, I've just come across the channel. What? What? Why would I do it? Why would I pick this spot? Just ask yourself that question. The simple fact of the matter is that that there are a lot of similarities to both sides of this channel. The rock structure is number one. The depth is number two. Water clarity is number three. And so there should be no reason that if bat or that if uh, trout. Um, and other species are over there, they should be over here. And so, and so do not hesitate to just try new spots that look, look good, because uh, especially if you're in a boat where you can move around and be a little bit more versatile, uh, then you have a chance of, uh, of, of maybe checking out 15 or 20 spots during the morning and coming up with, with your own favorite spots that, that seem to produce over and over for you. So, so once again, I still haven't found any lake trout, which to some extent is surprising because there are so many pups in the lake, but at this point, you have no clue what they're doing. I've been, like I said, I've been gone. I haven't been staying in touch. I don't read a lot of other people's reports. I like to make my own, so, so make my own way. So. So basically, I'm just doing exactly what I do every single time I come out. You have to be able to experiment. You have to be able to go out and, and uh, get skunked every once in a while. And you have to get out there and, and uh, try to read the conditions and see what those fish might be doing. We know that the lake trout are trying to head right back in there to the spawning beds, uh, whether it be here in the canyon over at Sheep Creek or here in Lucerne up to Anvil. Um, there are so many different pot spots that the that the lake trout spawn that everybody wants to focus on one or two spots but there's a lot of them so you're going to be able to find your own if you realize that that uh, lake trout fishing specifically is not a scarce thing there's a lot of lake trout to be caught
Come on, hit it again. Hit it again. <laughs> Must be small fish. Well, there's a, another one right there. Come on. He's wanting to put up a good fight. Nice fish, actually. Real nice fish. See if I can get him in. Got him in. Very nice. Well, these fish are really liking the white today, and that's great news. Here we go. Well, thanks for watching <coughs> this episode of Don Alphen on Fishing. This is only my fourth stop, and uh, the rainbows have picked up. They're starting to hit almost every cast, and I, I just wanted to let you know that this is this is just the start of this transition going on from from summer to fall, and um, and all I've done today is thrown the the, the white uh, clear tube and uh, with a little tip of night crawler and the same thing with that uh, uh, green and brown and uh, and although I haven't caught a ton of fish I've caught plenty and I, I I've now targeted kind of three or four things I like points um, I'm not liking the backs of coves right yet but I'm liking points and so I just if you point hop go from one point to the other I'm sure you can catch these fish have not found any lake trout yet but hey the season's young and I'll run into them here in a little while and be able to show you some nice pup lake trout videos so thanks again for watching appreciate you uh, subscribing to the channel if you haven't and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for watching.